Okay, go away any trash. Okay. Now down to removing our carburetors. Pretty uh, pretty simple operation removing these guys. Somewhere in my wiring harness. Okay. My other carburetor coupler. But okay. All six of these carburetors, each one of them has a little screw in here. Um, it, it just aids when you're putting it back together to, to hold the carburetor in place. Uh, people told me that it helps line the carburetor up. I don't know why. Uh, pain in the butt for me, but <clears throat> so be it. Each one of these carburetors, I'm going to label. I'm going to label first cylinder. This motor transfers directly backward. So this is your number one carburetor corresponds with number one cylinder, two, three, four, five, six, and they run straight back. So this is your number one carburetor, number two, three, on down the line. Your uh, your 90 degree motors and uh, some of your cross flows, this carburetor will, will run this cylinder. So it's, it's important that you uh, keep track of which carburetor goes on which cylinder. The reason being is after these motors have lived a while, uh, Rejetting is a lot of times uh, necessary to to, uh, to make it idle properly and and make it run at high speeds and make it run at intermediate speeds properly. We have to go through and uh, rejet these carburetors for a um, for a more uh, more equal and uh, user friendly uh, you know running experience. So um, what I'm going to do is take a uh, take like a scratch off. And label all these carburetors. I use Roman numerals because it's easier to make straight lines. building the carburetors you're going to want to label the body and the bowl because you want your body and bowl assembly to stay together with the same one. Sometimes these bowls get used to the body of it and they conform to each other. So if you take one bowl from another carburetor and put that on you know it's it's non corresponding you know unit then uh, then you can wind up with leakage. So uh, a lot of take a lot of guesswork out what we like to do label everything, that way we know this bowl goes with this carburetor, <clears throat> etc. I'm going to get into, uh, once I get this all torn apart, then I'm going to show you guys how to, um, how I like to do my own, do my carburetor rebuilds, and um, the way I keep everything, it all, all put together into one unit and one package, which it makes a pretty efficient way of doing it. started here. Labeled carburetor crap.
make piece up here, these things just pop out. Pretty simple. Pretty self-explanatory on this link piece too. When you put it back in, obviously it goes bowed outward, you know, to avoid running into all this stuff. So that's you know, this is one of those pieces. A lot of a lot of pieces that they put on these things, they can only go in one way. And if you know, common sense doesn't say that's the way it goes. It probably isn't the way it goes. So get all these screws and make sure that they're all going to come out. never have any trouble taking these screws out. This this portion of the motor has got all the fuel and oil run through it, so you mainly end up with uh, a nice oiled up screw. It's not going to give you any problems coming out. Usually on the intake side, that's the way it is. fuel in. So when you pull these off individually, if you set them up right like that, it will probably keep them leaking fuel. If it's a freshly run motor, this one hasn't been run in several months, so a lot of this fuel is evaporated. Freshly run motor, usually you got to pull these out of there and dump them all into a, uh, a EPA approved container for proper disposal. these carpet all right they're fairly well empty the fuel feed is back here on this carburetor comes through this hole here goes into that hole there Oh, excuse me, <laughs> that's air feed. Well, through this slot here, into this hole here, fills the bowl of carburetor. When you turn this thing up on its side like that, the fuel should come back out. The front screw there is your drain, so you take that out and you can make sure there's no remaining fuel in it. So if you're in any, uh, being in a shop, I don't really worry if it stinks like gas around here because when I go home, I don't have to smell it. But if uh, you're working in your garage, you want to make sure that uh, you don't have those fumes that annoy the, uh, the wife or the kids. 
or anything else like that. I personally enjoy the smell of gasoline, two stroke, fumes, all that stuff. I like it. My girlfriend, not so much. Components left here to remove, and then we're going to get into the disassembly of the block. These are your throttle bodies. Um, your idle is controlled in this particular engine in the throttle body. This screw right here is your fuel adjustment. Um, turning this screw in leans it out, which means less fuel on your idle circuit. When you turn the screw out, loosen it in a counterclockwise direction, it adds more fuel to the cylinder. Usually, when you rebuild an engine, Everything's going to change uh, during operation. So your what all these settings are now may not be what they're uh, what they need to be once the motor is reassembled. Because you're going to have different displacement, it, which is the main, it, it basically your main um, thing that's going to change how much fuel this this engine needs. I haven't gotten this apart yet. I don't know exactly how much, but we always at least bore these 20 over which changes the displacement obviously or if they're already large, too large to where we can't bore them again we'll put a new sleeve in there and then uh, bore the sleeve to, uh, to your standard standard bore of that particular engine. These pistons are weighted therefore if, uh, if you have a hole per se that you need to um, bore over, say 20 over you, you, can get, you can get 20s and 30s on a lot of these motors. Some of them you can only get 30s on. So before before you direct your machine shop and uh, you know into boring the motor, make sure that the, the piston that you want is available before you you have uh, you have to do any uh, any cutting on it. Once I get these removed. We're going to set it all aside and rebuild all the intakes, all the intake stuff, carburetors and everything on another video. seals here too. Just pull the one off the other side, let it off, throw it away. We don't use, we don't reuse anything except for hard 